This was pianist Wukash Pavlik and his Polish American Quartet featuring David Gufczewski on sax, Tom Kennedy on the bass, and Dave Wackel on drums. They played a piece titled A Matter of Urgency from the uh, 2019 CD album Long Distance Connections, released here in the United States on Friday, September 3 by Summit Records. Hello everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the Kosciuszko Foundation online concert series Quarantine Jazz. My name is Leszek Strzelecki and I'm your host. Our featured guest today is just the person we've been uh, listening to, pianist from Warsaw, Poland, Łukasz Pawlik. Welcome to the program, Łukasz. How are you? Hello, doing great. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to be featured on uh, Quarantine Jazz and uh, I'm looking forward to speaking a bit about myself and about my record. The record was uh, show, is already on the market in Poland, uh, but it's coming on to the United States right now. Now, <coughs> uh, <laughs> you've got some uh, remarkable musicians on this record, on this very piece that was Dave Neckel, whom I remember from the 1990s as a member of Chick Corea Electric Band and also Tom Kennedy, but uh, on the other uh, pieces you have uh, the likes of Randy Brecker on uh, trumpet or guitar player Mike Stern. How did you pull it? This is a, quite a scoop. How did you pull it off? Um, I am very fortunate uh, to uh, have known Randy Brecker for uh, almost 30 years and Randy was the person who opened the, the door to uh, connections with uh, uh, other musicians that are featured on this record. He's also present himself. Uh, I'm very honored to, uh, to have Randy for the first time on my record. But it was a um, couple of years ago when I was working on my previous record called Lonely Journey when I uh, really wanted to uh, get in touch with Mike and ask him to record uh, one song for that album. Um, and Randy helped me get Mike's uh, contact information uh, information about uh, who is actually the person to contact to reach him, uh, which was his manager. And this is how it all started. And um, a couple of years uh, after uh, that uh, session for, for my previous CD, uh, we met during a festival in the city of Wuch, where I played with my quartet and Mike was also invited to play with Dave Weckl, uh, Tom Kennedy, and Randy was there also and it was our first uh, meeting in person and I was very pleased uh, and surprised um, to hear that Mike would like to do something together which uh, uh, m m he meant to play together uh, which materialized uh, in the following year um, that was 2017 and we played uh, four concerts in Poland in that year and we also did a session for this record that I'm talking about right now and uh, I had a session with Mike in Warsaw recording uh, songs uh, for for the album that I just started working on. He, he, his session was um, probably one of the first uh, recordings made for this record and the day after that, we, we had our first concert. So it was a very exciting time for me. And uh, Mike also introduced me to Dave Weckl and to Tom Kennedy. And he actually suggested that uh, I should ask Dave to, to play something. So I sent him uh, uh, some arrangements of my songs that I um, created on the computer. And he was interested to 
record a couple of them and he also became the co-producer of, of the two songs that uh, are opening the albums and we, we just heard uh, the second track from, from the album. Right. right. Well, wow, that's quite, that was quite logistical. I wouldn't say nightmare, but that was a quite logis quite a challenge logistically, uh, and I think it explains at least a, a little bit the title, "Long Distance Connections." Is that so? Exactly. So my idea uh, was to bring together my musical idols and to ask them to play my music. Um, it wasn't easy. I thought at the beginning it might not be viable to uh, um, do a fully overdubbed record, which it, in fact it had to be because those great musicians uh, usually live very far apart and bringing them into one studio at one place uh, was impossible. They all have um, busy schedules, they, they are touring uh, with different bands. So this was the only way to do it. and. Um, and the challenge was to create the illusion of playing together, of having a band playing together at the same time. Uh, I was fully aware of the risk of incongruity of uh, overdub records, which is uh, sometimes the case. Uh, so I uh, decided to take certain steps to minimize that risk and uh, I started the sessions from uh, melodic instruments like Mike was one of the first sessions uh, then saxophones, Randy and then I um, intended to record the rhythm section at the very end so the, the drummer and the bass player could play on the top of the improvised solos and they could organically respond to the statements that were made by the soloists, including myself. Tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of your background, the biography that is uh, somewhat uh, generic on your biography that one can find on online. Uh, let me start with this statement. You come from the family of rich musical heritage. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I'm actually, I feel absolutely blessed to uh, be part of a fully musical family. Uh, even my grand grandparents were musicians. My uh, one of them was uh, probably the first saxophone player in, in Poland. Uh, both of my parents are um, successful uh, concert pianists. My mom is a classical pianist uh, specializing in vocal music. Um, in the recent years, organizing festivals with the music of uh, Stanisław Moniuszko, uh, father of Polish opera. Um, my father is a well-known jazz pianist, uh, and uh, I was talking about Randy Brecker before, uh, and I met Randy obviously through my father, and they uh, won a Grammy Award in 2000. 14 for, for an album featuring Randy, a symphony orchestra, uh, with my father's music. So it's been a long-lasting musical friendship. So I basically, I, I grew up in a very mm, vibrant musical environment, always surrounded by music, but by musicians going to concerts, or my parents uh, going to, to the legendary jazz club aquarium where my father would play with uh, all kinds of different uh, jazz greats uh, and what I'm grateful for towards my parents is that they instilled a good uh, taste uh, uh, for music in me and uh, yeah this this manifests itself through what what I'm writing what what, what I identify myself with as a musician and uh, what I produce <laughs> Mm. And uh, part of your biography is not only what you inherited uh, from your dad, but also your actual collaboration, musical collaboration with your father. Uh, here's the example that you selected for us, the piece titled Pianine, where you perform with your dad. Let's listen to that.
Uh, on that piece of music, you are neither uh, the composer nor a pianist. You play cello. Yeah, uh, cello was actually mm, the instrument I picked up when I started my official uh, musical education uh, at the age of seven. I attended an elementary music school um, uh, as, a, as an aspiring young cellist because my parents were occupying the piano in our apartment all the time and they didn't want me to uh, disturb. <laughs> But um, I came back to piano a couple of years ago and I had to take piano lessons that were mandatory in uh, the music school. And then after a couple of years, I started diverting into jazz more and more uh, and also started to expand my vocabulary as an improvising cellist, which uh, I still have a lot of uh, work to do. Uh, but uh, this was uh, an attempt of um, um, improvised performance with my father and it's a uh, composition, one of my favorite pieces that he has ever composed um, and very demanding for the soloist, uh, very energetic and uh, I, that's why I decided to bring the electric cello to, to this particular song. Actually this is part of the concert that we played last year at the uh, Polish radio studio which I, I used the acoustic cello for. But for this single song I, I switched to electric cello, I added a little bit of an effect uh, to make it sound uh, almost like an uh, electric guitar and I'm kind of rocking on the cello. So um, basically I, I, uh, I've worked with my father uh, many times so far, we've performed uh, many concerts as a duo with me on the cello. We also had a, an album that came out in 2016 with his music called Four Works for Orchestra where I was um, uh, a soloist um, both on the cello and on the piano. We played a piece on two piano uh, and uh, with the orchestra and in, in another piece called Cello Mania I was the, the actual soloist and we've been uh, fortunate to uh, perform this uh, project in a couple of uh, big concert halls in Poland with great orchestras including the uh, NOSPR in Katowice uh, and the National Philharmonic in Warsaw. So that has always been a particular challenge to uh, come up on stage both as a pianist and a cellist at one concert. But I have done this and um, quite proud of that actually. Well, watching that particular uh, piece, uh, I had the impression that yeah, you, you both knew very well what you were doing, uh, as if you rehearsed it several times. Now, for the yeah. f about the first half, and let me let tell me if I got that right. Uh, the first half of the piece, you were just playing uh, uh, playing a role of a written section, so to speak, while your dad on piano was leading the the the, the movement, the the, the, the melody. But then at about the half of that, it seemed to have switched that you taking over and leading and doing extended solo only to return to your original role uh, at the end of that tune. Did I get it right? Absolutely. Um, this is a typical structure of, uh, of a performance of a song, uh, which happens to be a jazz song in, in, in this particular case. But... Um, it has a, a very uh, traditional structure with uh, a first theme, then a bridge, and then there is an improvised part on um, AABA form, uh, and there are a couple of choruses that each of us plays, um, and um, there is also a, like an interlude be between the solos. So my father plays the first solo and um, I accompany him as, as a bass player trying to play in a rhythmical way because we don't have a drummer in this case um, so I have to be very aware of the rhythm and very precise and then my father 
provides uh, the foundation of, of a rhythm section in my soul. So he plays the bass and he implies the, 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 the rhythm that is running throughout the solo, which is actually an odd meter, 7, 8, but I, I really like playing in odd meters. It's a particular challenge that I like to face. Interesting. Now, what's next? You have some project in the making, in the making for us. What is it? Tell us. Yeah, this is actually something I've already finished. Um, it's called uh, the, the this piece is called Three Sequences for Orchestra. Uh, as the name indicates, uh, it's a work uh, for orchestra, but also. Um, features the jazz trio with an improvising piano. Um, and this is like a large body of work of over 50 minutes that I started working on uh, during the beginning of the pandemic when I finally had time to do something that I always wanted to try but could never get to it somehow. And then throughout the period of isolation, I started um, um, experimenting with, with orchestra and combining it with, with uh, jazz. Uh, so actually, um, the idea uh, was to um, make jazz and classical music interact on equal terms, which is not that common. Uh, most of the records that I know uh, put the, the jazz uh, in, idiom in front, whereas the, the classical orchestra serves as sort of a background, add, adds uh, texture to it. But in this case, my goal was to make uh, the orchestra a storyteller that uh, controls the narrative um, but bringing jazz into it, bringing a, another dimension to, to a music by uh, injecting the improvised uh, parts with, with the rhythm section, with drums, bass and uh, improvising piano. So this was an experiment, but I'm pretty happy with uh, the outcome. Uh, I'm uh, finishing the score now. Uh, I, I have everything recorded. Uh, as a demo version that that I produced uh, on on my sequencer, but now it's time to score everything, which takes plenty of time, unfortunately. But I really hope to be able to perform it with a real orchestra at some point. Which we obviously wish you that that comes to uh, fruition. But let's listen to uh, what you've so far produced. That seems quite interesting indeed. So let's listen to that.
however briefly we covered your present, past and the near future. Back to the present. Another piece from Long Distance Connections uh, titled Reflections, that's what you selected uh, for us. Uh, and so let's listen to this one and that will conclude our program today. In our next episode, uh, we'll meet with a trumpet player, composer, arranger, and a band leader, as usual for the, for the uh, jazz musicians. His name is uh, Piotr Schmidt. Till then, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the music and the rest of the program. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Leszek. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, thanks to everyone tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the music and make sure to check out the new album. Peace.